Hey, guess what happened? E three happened. Oh, E three happened. I never yes, would have. I never would have guessed. Triple E. Yep. Oh, is that a, is that a new wrestler? It's, it's, triple E. It's a, it's the it's the basic. It's basically gaming Christmas. Can you can you me tell? Melvin can, are here can you tell my excitement we saw for this? All the stuff. Oh, do you want to tell? You want to tell the audience the why Christmas. I saw it in the first place? Because I feel like that's pretty important. Oh yeah. I forced Melvin to watch this because he's forcing me to watch the Emoji movie sometimes. Yeah, because I know Jeremy will love it. I know that would be Jeremy's like number one movie of this year. I mean, forget Spider Man, Homecoming. Forget that. Like, this is gonna triumph. Everything. I still have no idea how it's gonna be released. Going to this is gonna be exciting right now because I'm in between jobs, but I'm still gonna find some way to watch this. You're gonna movie. you're gonna find some way. I'm gonna force you. You, you have to. You have to watch it. July 29th, remember the date. All right, we're going to be very excited. We're going to wear our emoji shirts, and we're going to bring our emoji plushies, and we're just going to have a great old time because one of the best inventions of this century is obviously the emoji, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Listen, folks, you guys do not know how hard it is for me to torture Jeremy. Literally almost everything that is considered bad, Jeremy likes. It's It's hard. Like even even horrible movies he enjoys. I can't torture him. This is the only way I can. This is the only way. With that said, I saw that. That's you know the, what? I will laugh if the, I end up somehow enjoying this. If movie you somehow movie. enjoy yeah. it, gosh, I will. I mean, I think the shame of you enjoying it will be bad enough. So that's okay. Uh, so yeah, we saw E three. Uh, we're mainly going to talk about, so how we're going to do this is we're going to talk about the, you know, the big three, which is why it's called E3. I'm just going to divide it up into four parts. Yeah. So, okay. So, so Microsoft, okay. Miscellaneous thing for the other ones. Yeah. So we're going to talk about Microsoft then Sony, then Nintendo. And then we're just going to talk about our favorite things we notice either in E3 or stuff that was announced during E3. So you know, so we might talk a lot about the Nintendo Treehouse event because they announced quite a few games that weren't announced during their press conference. But now this is the Microsoft E3. So overall, Jeremy, what were your thoughts on Microsoft? A lot of shooters, a lot of type of games that I personally won't be interested in, but I can see other people liking. There were also like multiple times in this conference where I thought, Oh, could this be something? And it's like, nope, it's something else. Dang it. You lied to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I'll say this right well, now. We'll get to them. I guess we'll I guess I, I shouldn't wait until the end to say it, but uh, out of the out of the other two, I think Microsoft had the best presentation out of the other out of Sony and Nintendo. Uh, I really? Think, yes, I think they had the best one. And the way I rate it, I do not rate it based on the way the amount of games I wanted to play. Because if I rated it based on like the games I really wanted to play, I would have probably picked Nintendo because I liked all the games they showed. But I think out of like trying to build trust to their audience, I think Microsoft did the best chance, did the best job of it. And we'll... we'll... Uh, Because most people, the general consensus from what I've read is Nintendo was actually the one who won this year for most people. Okay, well, well, when we get to Nintendo, I'll talk about some of the things that Nintendo did. Uh, I'll, I'll just tell you there are some moments that got me pretty uh, pissed because it's like they companies like to do a lot of bullshit things, and I think Nintendo did quite a few bullshit things for E3. Like, E3 is supposed to, you're supposed to show your best, you know? You're supposed to show what you got. You know, so we'll get into Nintendo, but Nintendo, I had some problems with, but let's start with Microsoft. So, mm, oh man. Okay. Listen, Jeremy, when, when your name is Melvin and you look at the Xbox one X and you say, wow, compared to that, I have a pretty good name. You know, that's a big problem. So the Xbox one X (laughs) is there. Project Scorpio, which that's actually a pretty cool name. I would nope. lo- Project Scorpio is still Xbox One S. This is a whole new. No, no, no. The Scorpio Xbox is the X. the new. No, this is Project Scorpio. Xbox One X. No, there's still an S. Xbox One S. Out of out of all twenty six letters X. they picked, they picked the two that sound the most similar. X yeah, and S. Like, 
it's like I I don't know, man. They pick You can have your Xbox One you can have your Xbox One in one Xbox. Oh my gosh. It's so X. it's so dumb. The names are so <laughs> stupid. Other than the name <laughs> other than the name, I have no issue with the console itself. So it's supposed I cannot- to be it's supposed so it's supposed to be the most powerful wait. console to come out at that time. Uh, six teraflops, which I really don't know what that means. I don't know the jargon. I don't pay attention to the jargon. Um, so it's pretty powerful. Uh, if you would, it would be pretty difficult actually to buy a PC for five hundred dollars that would be just as powerful, custom made. So they are on the top end, and I think what Xbox is doing, I feel like that's just what's going to be the the normal thing for consoles now. I think they're going to have slower... They're going to have faster generation bumps. And I think they're going to stay around the $400, $500 range because that's the only way they're going to keep being more powerful than modern PCs is if they keep it around that price. So I think consoles are going to be more expensive. But at the same time, they're going to allow for more backwards compatibility. So it's like, it doesn't really matter. It's like once you buy it, there's still a ton of games for you to play. So I feel like this is the direction console gaming is going for. And I don't have a problem with it, really. I think they did a nice job announcing their console. It looks pretty nice. You know, all the other games that will come out for it, all the previous games that come out for it are going to be up to 4K. So that's that's pretty good. I don't have a 4K television myself, like in my room. There's one in the living room, so I can't use the 4K. But, you know, in the future, you'll be able to. You can play Xbox One. 360 and Xbox One <laughs> yep. games on the same thing. Yep, you can play a lot of uh, uh, different games. So that it, it's so if you're in the Xbox family, you have a lot of good value. But even if you're getting into Xbox, there's still a lot of good games for you to buy that are available right now. Because that's one of the problems with like new released consoles is that you know it takes a while for good games to come up. But with the Xbox One X, there's already a ton of games for you to buy. So. You know, this is no- why I like backwards compatibility and things, mm-hmm. because if you're buying a new console on launch, at least you still have the entirely previous system worth of games mm-hmm. to hold you over until you have enough uh, newer mm-hmm. games to mm-hmm. warrant that purchase. But, but personally, even with backwards compatibility, it still takes at least a couple of games mm-hmm. that make me say, wow, I want that mm-hmm. to make me purchase the console. Mm-hmm. For me, it's not this bad. But for $500, it's like... It's not a bad price if there's already good games out for it, you know. So I don't, I don't yeah. see a problem with it. If it's, yeah, if it's, if really it's gonna be five hundred dollars, if you're gonna make you spend five hundred dollars up front without any games, then there better be good games for it. And Xbox One, it's not really the Plus console you'll, for me. Five hundred dollars to get a four K TV because mm-hmm. let's be honest, not most people don't have four K right now. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't, I don't have a Blu Ray player, so this could be a pretty good uh, Blu Ray player for me if I need one. So. I think it still plays Blu-ray. So I'm not sure. Uh, I know Any the X- Xbox One can play Blu-ray. Uh, can this one still play Blu-ray? Because if it still can, I, I I could still use a Blu-ray player. So this could be my Blu-ray player. I think for PlayStation once. Four does it too. So it's yeah, both, a yeah, it's Sony, so they have they have it for sure. So I have no problem with how they announced it. They did a pretty good job announcing it. So. Let's see. We're not going to go through all the games. This isn't going to be an in-depth overview because <laughs> Microsoft especially, they announced a lot of games. So it's like, I, I don't even... That's one thing I like about this E3 compared to others. Mm. There was little to no fluff Yeah, for the... most of the big developers. No, most there of... There was just game, mm-hmm. game, 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 game. No, I like game. that. You know, anytime brief, mm. nope, games, more games. That That's one of the <laughs> and reasons... that's what people turn in E3 for. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons why I like this one. You don't turn in to see a car drive in in the middle of the runway to show off that no one can afford. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No, so, yeah, so this one did a pretty... Microsoft especially, I think, did the best job of showing us, like, game after game. And I think half of the games are going to be released the same day as the Xbox One X. God, I hope they change that name. I seriously hope it. Just call it, like, Xbox Scorpio. They better. Okay. One thing that made Xbox One really... uh, made me really mad about Xbox One... (laughs) Is that they use exclusive for like half of the games, mm-hmm. but here's the thing. When you actually look it up, you can see that those exclusive games are actually planned for PlayStation 2. So, PlayStation 4? they really exclusive. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and then some of their games are also for Windows 10 as well, so. 
Yeah, that too. Like, you're not going to convince me to buy a console when you're also releasing stuff on PC. Mm-hmm. Which, because to be honest, that's sort of... You don't really... You, that's mm-hmm. why Microsoft is, like, their biggest problem. Mm-hmm. Is that since they're also part of the PC market, mm-hmm. they also kind of want to release their games mm-hmm. to PC, too. But that just leaves your original console with, like, zero exclusive things just for that console. Yeah, pretty much. But, like, to be honest, that's kind of the thing that makes me gravitate towards the Xbox a little bit more than the other consoles. Because here's the thing. Since some of the games are, like, cross-platform with Windows 10 and Xbox One X, uh, you know, if I have the game for the Xbox One X, I'll have a PC. And, you know, I'll have the PC no matter what. So that's that's a good yeah. thing. But that. For me, that means that well, f- I would have to get a PS4 because I could get all those games mm-hmm. plus Sony exclusives. Yeah, so I guess for console gamers like you, you prefer like you wouldn't prefer that, but for someone who has a PC, that's something I would prefer. I like that uh, personally. So I, I don't know what the consensus is on that I- issue on like cross between PC and Xbox. But eh, we'll 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 see what the market says about it. So uh, let's skip Anthem and let's talk about Assassin's Creed Origins. So what do you think about Assassin's Creed? Well, what do you think about the Assassin's Creed series in general? I don't think you've ever played it, but you can just uh, tell me like what you think from seeing. I it. haven't played it, so I can't really form an opinion. Did it ever look but good I don't to really you? Trust the game. Did Assassin's no. Creed ever look good to you? Never. And why? Did it? Did does it, being an assassin they all look does, the same? They all look the same. Honest. But like, does it ever look cool to you, period? Like, uh, have you uh, ever have you ever seen Assassin's Creed? Pirate Cri- one. Okay, so that one, one that good. one was the closest thing t- for you to say, like, hmm, maybe I'll play it one day. Was the Pirates one. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. So this one is Assassin's Creed Origins, which goes back to Egyptian times, which they say a lot of people say that's like the start of like civilization is the Egyptian times. This was also in the Ubisoft conference. This, this was also in the Ubisoft that, conference. Yes, it was. This is like a general theme is mm-hmm. that you'll see a lot of games. But they promoted it that, that it'll be in 4K on the Xbox One. We'll X. get to Skyrim. We'll get to Skyrim. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that in the, in the fourth one where we talk about great games and bad games. So Assassin's Creed Origins, it, it looks good. I hope it's, I hope they improve because the, gosh, I, I, I can't believe they're still making Assassin's Creed games to be honest because there's just, god damn, there's way too, I think there's like more than 10. There, ha- there has to be 10 or more in this, in the series. And that's not even counting, they, like, that's not even counting, like, spinoffs, like, ones that they made for the iPhone, the DS, the 3DS, the PSP, the PS Vita, like, iPads, like, like, they, they've made it, like, seriously. It's on more consoles than Tetris at this point. They seriously make way too many Assassin's Creed. What games. about more, what about more than Rayman 2? Rayman 2? Oh, that's, man. like, the most ported. Because that's like the most ported game in existence. Yeah, that too. That's, but yeah, it, it looked good. In all honesty, it looked pretty good. Uh, I don't know what they're gonna. Do. I don't know what new ideas are really gonna come up with. Because they honestly, I've, I, they I, I, I played. It. So the games I've played is Assassin's Creed Two, Assassin's Creed Three, and I played Black Flag. I played Assassin's Creed. That, that's the pirate one. And those <sighs> games are so big, it's like I can't imagine what they can do next. Like, with other franchises where there's, like, a big overworld, like, Far Cry and then, like, um, Bla- uh, Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row, they, like, they give their games, like, enough time so it's, like, they can come up with new ideas. But Assassin's Creed has been coming out, like, year after year after year. It's, like, I don't know what they do new. And I don't care, but still, I'm cu- I- I'm curious. I'm curious. I, I want to see what they do with Origins because may- maybe I'll get it maybe I'll I'll finally get because when I played Assassin's Creed 2 for the first time like that was a pretty cool experience that was a lot of fun I I enjoyed that a lot so hopefully this can do the same I know thing. you said that we would skip Anthem sorry to be jumping around yeah. but I know you said we'd skip Anthem but there's mm-hmm. one thing I wanted to say that that was Bioware freaking mm-hmm. Bioware people who make Mass Effect and those type of really big awesome RPG games mm-hmm. make some generic Halo like shooter and it really made me disappointed because I saw Bioware mm-hmm. could this be what is this Mass Effect could it be something else can we can we get something really cool nope mm-hmm. nope okay well yeah I just I skipped Anthem because it's like I don't really care and then I kind of want to skip Code Vein as well because I don't really care about that one either I just want to talk about games I have. I want to talk about games I actually have things to say about. That's that's really all I want to do. 
Because if we talk about every single, uh-huh. if we talk about every single Xbox game they had, that's that's gonna take forever. It's gonna take a long time. Okay, so Crackdown yeah, Three. Some... Are, you, are you ready to talk about Crackdown? Oh, I was 3? gonna talk about Code Bane, but whatever. Okay, if you have some, okay, if you have something to say, let, you can you can talk about it. But I don't have anything to say about Code. Code Bane was, uh, well, I don't have much. I'm just gonna say that it was actually a pretty look, good looking RPG. Mm. They they know how to make their RPGs. So this one with that this one actually like we don't know much, uh-huh. but. I just have high hopes. I don't know. I think I think for for some of these games, like the videos speak for themselves. So it's like I, I I'm not gonna have much to say about Crackdown Three either. From what I heard, they're they're saying Terry Crews. Okay, that's all I gotta say. Okay. Oh, Cruz. they 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 said it's a mixture of Grand Theft Auto and being a superhero. And then my question is, didn't Saints Row Four already do that? So it looks well, no. It looks like the exact same gameplay as the other Crackdown game. Mm-hmm. Well, I have no, I do not know anything about the Crackdown series, but that's what I heard. It's similar to, so uh, maybe I'll try to get into it. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll check Steam for Crackdown two or one if it's even on Steam. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, it looks fun. Looks exciting. Maybe I don't know. Dragon Here's Ball Fighter Z. Fighter Z. This oh this is gonna be a great game. I know it. It's gonna be. I know, be, right? <laughs> it is gonna be such it's an amazing awesome. game. My gosh! Do you know what consoles this is coming out on? I need to know if it's coming out on a PC or not. This, well, this is. It, I know it's Xbox, but and but this is this is a Japanese franchise, so there is no way it's just gonna stay on Xbox. It's well, gonna go to other. I just want to know if it goes on PC Sony or not because sometimes Eventually. they don't. There are some games that just for some reason never go on PC, and it bothers me. So I hope this isn't one of them. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember like what some if some of these are exclusives or not i don't remember but yeah uh this being a japanese franchise means there, that it's going to be way more popular on playstation and nintendo so we know they're going to get is it coming out on nintendo as well i don't think it is probably not but at least sony is guaranteed yeah sony is thing. but it, it looks great uh i love it i think it's from the same developers as blaze blue so they they yeah guilty yeah, gear and, arc system. yeah arc system works so yeah they, they make a lot of great they're probably my favorite Besides Ubi Art, they probably make the most gorgeous like 2D games. Uh, that yeah, they just look they, amazing. They, and and there's not much to say. Just watch the trailer and find out. Like just watch. That's all I can say because the trailer speaks for itself. Uh, and that one trailer basically put Marvel vs. Capcom Bin Infinite off mm-hmm. of the map for everyone. Well, I, I hope this will finally get more people talking about Dragon Ball Z in general. That's just all I want, really. All I want is for people to do that. Uh, so, okay, so Forza... They should hire Team 4-Star and have the option to have the abridged form. Maybe, maybe they already did. Maybe they already did. Hopefully. Because they did for Xenoblade... Not Xenoblade, Xeno... Gosh, I forgot the, the that other Dragon Ball Z game they, they had. They brought the Team 4-Star. Dragon Ball Z universe? Yeah, Xenoverse. I, kept, I said Xenoblade, but I meant Xenoverse. All right, Wait, so... Wait, you can put the abridged people as the voices in the story mode and stuff? They did in Xenoverse, too. So maybe they'll do that. Yes. Well, no, it's in Japanese, yes. so I doubt it. Unfortunately, it's in, I forgot it's in Japanese. So, but maybe they'll have an English version. We don't know. Uh, okay. So Forza Motorsports Seven. Uh Hey, look, we're showing a car on stage. Wow, isn't this great? You can't afford it, but this is the first time this is happening. This is history, I guess. And we're like, dude, show it. That this is, has nothing to do with anything. I'll, I'll I'll forgive it. I'll forgive it. I mean, if you're because like part of the thing about being a Forza Motorsports fan is like looking at the cool cars and sort of being cool, like interested by it. So I I think for the fans who like Forza Motorsports, that makes sense. I've never played any of the more, uh, motorsports games. I might try, I might pick this one up because I uh, I I do like racing games. I suck at them, but I like racing games. So maybe I'll pick this one up uh, and you know sort of check it out. It looked Honestly, gorgeous. Honestly, racing games are like sports. As long as they're not realistic and I can do some funny, crazy shit, then I'm all for a good racing well, game. I just Forza recently played like Dirt Rally, and Dirt Dirt Rally is an amazing game, but it's like it's more realistic. It think of think of like well, Dirt Rally. Think of it like skate, where it's like you the controls are, you need to be like super precise with your controls and how you do things. So, oh yeah, skate I, has skate is like. That is one thing that really makes you wonder why. Like the control stick controls are almost as wonky as 
I, I personally like Early, it. As we shovel wear motion controls. I, I personally Probably like bad, skates, but... controls. I personally like them. They, they take a long time to get used to it. Like, you have, you have to spend, like, more than an hour just to, like, properly get good. But, like, once you do, it's pretty... I, I personally like it, but I, I do like games like that where it's, like, you kind of do have to be more accurate. And for some reason, that's been more popular now. Like, those racing games where it's, like, you, you have to be really precise with how you steer break do turns like that and i personally like i don't that mind style. games that are precise but i want games where even though you are precise you can also do some really crazy stuff well i can't think of a game that does stuff that. that you can't do in real life i can't think of a game that really does that yet or a racing game that does that but f-zero did it but we don't get well any f-zero did types. that but eh, it's it's not the same type like i don't know i just like I like this type of racing style to me. It's because no matter how much you play it, you're never going to be perfect at the game. So I think that's the reason. But yeah, I mean, there's not much to say. Either you like the game or you don't. That's just how it is. So uh, what is this? Next is a bunch of indie games. Oh, yeah. I'll be, okay. I'm reading indie through the games. list. Okay. Uh, Cuphead. I'm excited for Cuphead. Cuphead. That game looks amazing. Yeah, I'll, I'll play it. If, I, if, I have, if I have people to play with, I'll, I'll play it. It's basically 1920s Disney. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, uh, combined with Galaga, mm-hmm. which is like, how does that work and why is it so amazing? Yeah, it, lo- it looks good. It took a long time to finally get a release date, but yeah, it did. Uh, there's a lot of... Oh, Hello Neighbor. I know about that. Is that, is that the Fable series? Uh, I don't remember. All, I, I can't remember all the games that were announced, but yeah, it, it's nice to see, you know, Xbox... Because here's what I think more tri- more AAA developers need to start, like, including indie developers, what? too. Uh, I said that more, more AAA developers need to, like, support the indie developers. Because they do make a lot of good games and things like that. I think they do make a lot of good games. And AAA developers need to start seeing that and st- need to start putting their ideas to their full potential. You know, like, giving them, like, an actual budget. All right, so I think that's all we have to say for the indie games. I mean, yeah, some of the, most Next of the games. Next is look... uh, Life is Strange Before the Storm. Yes. So, uh, this which is... I saw the Square logo and think, oh, is this a new Final Fantasy? Please yeah. be a new Final Fantasy. That'd be great. But mm-hmm. nope, Life is Strange prequel mm-hmm. starring Chloe. Yep. Hey, that's cool. It is Life a three-episode prequel so... series set before the events of the first game. So it is a prequel, and it's three episodes. Ooh, these are... You shouldn't do that. It's bad luck. Remember the last people that made prequels that were also three episodes long? Uh, Star Wars, hint, hint. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Sometimes prequels are better. Uh, than... I mean, we could have gotten, like, some sort of 15 spinoff, which... Also pissed me off when we get the Stones mm-hmm. conference. But okay. or maybe the seven we make we could get an info on that. Or Kingdom Hearts three, which was also an which was announced that wasn't part of E three, which we're gonna probably talk about in miscellaneous, but yeah, anything well, else would have made me so happy to see that square logo mm-hmm. on the screen. Yeah. Literally anything else. The city of mm-hmm. All right. Uh Metro Exodus this looked like a great game. As soon as I saw it on screen, I knew that was Metro. I knew it was Metro. They have a great uh, style when it comes to their like first-person shooters. It's n- it's it's really unlike any other shooter in general. It, it's trying to like sort of combine uh, like steampunk with like I don't know how I don't know how to say it. Like kind of like Final Fantasy, uh, not Final Fantasy, uh, Resident Evil Seven kind of is in a way. You know, like first-person sort of like kind of horror thriller style things mentioning resident evil 7 would automatically just mm-hmm. so it, it metro exodus does look like an amazing game i would i, I want to see this game in 4k more than any other game oh, no kingdom hearts in 4k jesus that's but that's that's for another story that's a straight up pixar quality jesus that would look right amazing there. that would look gorgeous uh okay uh so middle, many worlds. middle earth shadow of war um, oh, I, this I, game looks awesome. I've never played the original, so I can't really say much about the game in general. I've heard I I, I haven't, I, I haven't it, heard a single bad thing system about this game. I heard was amazing, and this game's just taking that and making it even better. Mm-hmm. But you're also looking at dude, bro, Orc, and it's just wow, so. they just took it and made it better. And it's like you know that crazy thing that everything everyone praised. Mm-hmm. 
why don't we do it again, but better? That's what a sequel should do. Yeah, that's what that's opinion. what most sequels should strive to do. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, there's really not much I can say about it. It looks great. I need to play the first one before playing this one. Uh, but yeah, and then well, speaking of playing the first one before the second one, Ori and the Will of the Wisp. This game looks absolutely gorgeous. The first game looks amazing. I don't know why I haven't played the first game yet. Uh, something must be wrong with me. Uh, it, there's really not much you can say about the game that hasn't been said already. This is... Okay, this game is probably one of the most gorgeous 2D games I've ever seen. For some reason, a lot of the 2D games that do get released are just absolutely beautiful. And it's just amazing. Because they to have see. the technology to do it. If you take the time and make actual detailed shaded sprites using 4K and stuff, you can make a game that looks as mm-hmm. well as a Disney film. Yeah, but like, but like. Most developers don't try to do that. But like, here's the realistic. thing. Yeah, here's the thing. There are more resources out there to make you know 3d games and 2 it's like to make a really good 2d game you kind of have to go out of your way to make it look gorgeous like you actually have to put like tons of effort but to make a 3d game look good that's actually a little bit easier to do so making a 2d great looking game is actually a little bit harder in some ways uh what it, about it's, a 2.5d game where like everything is 2d but everything has... Uh, that, that one's a little bit easier. The only reason why I'm saying that it's easier to make a good 3D looking game is because there's a lot of like assets out there you can buy, but there's not as many 2D assets to buy. So a lot of your things have to look... Like you kind of have to make it on your own, you know? Uh, kind of like... Yeah, that's... Like, yeah, 2D games, there's just not as many assets out there for you to like buy and things like that. But yeah, Ori and the Will... I need to play the first one, and I haven't yet for some reason. Uh, Sea of Thieves. This one, this one's really weird. I wonder don't... what Rare is doing for the past couple of years. Well, now you, now you know. This is what Microsoft I, got Rare for everybody. I don't know how to how to feel about this game. I was try I was trying to like get into it. Like, oh, you know, this looks good, but the way they announced it just was weird. They had like some sort of like pirate sounding guy like announcing everything you're doing. I'm sure it's going to be a fine game, but I. I, I, it's hard to trust Rare. I mean, they did make... Uh, what was that game? Gosh, what's that game? Killer Instinct? They made that game, which was a launch. Yeah, they, and that one looks good, and I heard great things about well, that. No, they t- it was like the same situation with Smash, where like they didn't really know much about fighting games at this point, so they went to a different person, and they helped them. They still mm-hmm. developed it, but it was like a co-developed thing. Mm-hmm. Same but, with but like, st- how Smash Brothers, they got so, the help from Namco. I, I don't know anything about Rare and like what it's doing nowadays, so I can't really say. I guess you just have to wait until the game comes out because first, this is the problem with first impressions is that you you almost know nothing. I mean, they did show a lot of gameplay footage, but you kind of need to play the game to understand it. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. uh, I have nothing to say about State of Decay Two. Do you? It's a uh, multiplayer zombie survival game, so. Uh, oh, that one! That one looked dumb. There's open world. There's co-op gameplay. I mean, that looked that looked like visually awful compared to everything else. Well, most so. most zombie MMOs look horrible. So it's not yeah. doing anything new and different. I don't think any really. Okay, well, when we get to Sony, most zombie games aren't doing anything new or different. But when we get to Sony, we'll talk about that. Okay, this game actually looks good. Lucky Super yeah, Lucky's look- Tale. They showed the game. I like the it trailer. Like Conquer for the first they, time. It, they didn't it, have to. It was Conquer they didn't have to do like anything to like. It, it, you, you know, some of the games, like the pirate one, they needed like a pirate announcer to make it sound and feel awesome. This one, they just showed the trailer. They just showed the trailer of the guy, you know, going through things. Some of it was 3D. Some of it was 2.5D. Like that's all you need to do for a game. Like if a game looks good, just show us the game. You don't really need to convince us. And otherwise, so I liked that they just showed the game and it looked really nice and and whatnot. So there's really not much admit I can say. Is, it looks it looks gorgeous. Lo- admit it, you you thought it was Conquer at first with the orange tail. No, I did not. The they screen. killed Conquer off. They keep trying to bring him back, and for some reason they don't know how to bring him back. I, I want just to make it- I want a Conquer sequel, but we'll never get one. Uh, and if if there's if if anyone out there if there's ever a Kickstarter trying to say that they're trying to bring back like a Conquer style game, let me know and I will give that game money. I will back it. If anyone is even attempting to do it, I will back it because the one type of game we need platformers that are like 
like Conquer, where it's like the exp- like the adventure of it sounds just as fun as playing the game. We need that. So that's that's that that's going to get me on a tangent if I keep going on anymore. Uh, and then the last game I have. Oh, actually, no, I actually uh, Tacoma, uh, which is by the same people that made Gone Home. So I'm I'm assu- we literally got nothing from this. It's I'm a, I'm assuming it's going to be. Wet. I'm assuming that it's going to be similar style as Gone Home, where it's like you don't really do anything; you just experience the game. And I have played games like that, where it's like it is worth your time. So some of the example, like one of the examples is Stanley Parable, where you just experience the game. So if it's if it's anywhere near as good as Stanley Parable, I will get it. Uh, if it's, I don't know if it's on any other. It, it, it's from the same developer as Gone Home, so I'm sure it's going to be on PC anytime soon. Uh, and then, yeah, that was like pretty much all their major announcements. So yeah, they Microsoft kept things very simple, but they showed a lot of games that were going to be ready to come out when the Xbox One X comes out. So not only can you try some like brand new games with the Xbox One X, but you can just go back and play some other games that were announced like years ago and just play those instead. You can play any of those. Or you can play 360 games if you want. So it's like, you know, out of all the consoles, I'm sort of leaning more towards the Xbox One X, but gosh, I'm probably going to go for the PS4 Pro just because I like their games more. But in terms of being a, a good E3, I think... I think Microsoft did the best job. That's my opinion. I felt they did a better job than what they normally do. This was a strange, bizarre year where the companies that normally do bad, Ubisoft, Nintendo, Microsoft, actually did really well. And the companies that normally do do good, such as Sony, uh, kind of fell flat on their face. Except EA. EA will always suck. EA yeah, did a better job than last year. That's all I'm gonna say. They did a better job than last year. All right. I guess. I guess let's let's quickly talk about the other. Oh, actually, no. We'll say that for the miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. We'll talk about the other press conference because I did see all of them. I even saw the the PC one, the PC gamer so one. Did I? <laughs> oh, there was a PC Everyone, one. Yeah, there was oh. a PC one. You forgot. You forgot the PC has their. I has watched their every own? single one but that. I I even saw the PC one. Yes, I did. But, so, huh, take that. <laughs> all all for the emoji movie. <laughs> I'll do anything for the emoji movie. <laughs> Get to watch it. <laughs> oh man, you're you're going to watch oh, it. Glob. All right. All right. 